Ziri 11 here as I reach for this. And today we have a set completion video. Finally completed the 1617 Future Watch set from SB Authentic. Now, if you guys have been watching the channel for a while, you know I had this thing. I just wrote on this uh, <laughs> filler card here. This is pretty much the cards I needed for the Future Watch set. And Jake Gensel was the last one I needed. So the set's complete. Got all the cards. The complete 82 card set from cards number 116 to 197. I have some duplicates. And there's some inter more interesting ones in there. Like I have inscribes and I have a couple blacks in there. So yeah, let's get right into it. This is the 1617 complete Future Watch set, finally. And yes, I'm going for 1718. But yeah, let's get right into it. First card, card number 116, just happens to be William Nylander. So I guess there, he was one of the first thought of players to be in the set. I mean, he's probably one of the best rookies Rookies in 16-17, definitely top top 10, or yeah, maybe top 5. Value-wise, definitely top 5, but overall, maybe top 10. But yeah, that's how good this class is. By the way, this rookie class is probably one of the best ever. I'll say that right now, 16-17, one of the best rookie classes since probably 05-06. I'll say that right now, it's that good. But yeah, William Nylander is just one of them. And this one's the inscribed version, and the first 50 cards are dated um, with the player's first NHL game. Some of them are, some of them are. A lot of them were in 1718, so yeah. Unless you're Tyler Bertuzzi and you just decide to do all of them. But yeah, next up, um, and I will give a little bit of my opinion on the players. Um, so yeah, I'll, uh, obviously love Willie, but yeah. Next up is Charlie Lindgren. Um, he's pretty solid, he's actually, is he a lefty goalie? Yeah, he catches with his right hand, it's kind of interesting. But yeah, um, Charlie Lindgren, goaltending, well, Montreal's just an interesting case, aren't they? They're just quite interesting, but their goaltending is definitely interesting. I wish um, Charlie Lindgren would get uh, the backup role, but, you know, everybody's favorite aunt has to be the backup, which is fine. And hopefully Carey Price is healthy. But yeah, next up, we have Oliver Bjorkstrand. This guy is solid. He got like 40 points in his first full year. This guy has really good upside to be a top six player in the NHL. So yeah, Bjorkstrand, solid player. Next up is a guy that didn't really play the full year with Jersey, but he's still pretty solid. He's defensive defenseman, pretty much. Steven Santini, he's got size and he's right-handed. He'll have an NHL career. Next up is Connor Brown. Connor Brown, um, <laughs> he had 20 goals in, as a rookie in 16-17, but um, <laughs> he kind of got um, shafted a bit, and he played on the fourth line mostly in 17-18. Um, he's a great skater, great checker. Um, He's going to be fighting to play, like, third line. He's probably going to be third or fourth line. Um, he's going to be fighting with probably Kapanen on the right side there. But, yeah, definitely like Brown. Next up is Ryan Pulak. This guy has a heck of a shot, really heavy shot. This guy could be a good power play uh, quarterback. He got 10 goals as a rookie. I think he got, like, I think he got like 30 points. This guy's really solid. He's going to get some good points in the NHL. Ryan Pulak. Next up is a guy that's a fringe player. I mean, he could be in the league next year. <laughs> he could be a regular, and he could not be. But it's Dominic Simone. Um, he looked pretty decent when he was playing with Sid. But then again, that's not saying much. Um, this guy could be a regular next year. We'll see. Dominic Simone. Next up is Essa Lindell. Um, I guess Dallas already locked this guy up. Um, last year, I think they gave him like a four-year deal. He's a pretty solid defenseman. He put up some decent numbers, actually. So, yeah, Essa Lindell. Okay. Next up, I got two of these. Um... Anthony Mantha, he's uh, had a really good first full year. Um, wait, did he have two full years? I don't know, I think he missed some time in his first season, but yeah. Solid player, good power forward, big guy. Um, definitely going to be a really solid power forward in the NHL. Already is. There we go. There's the, I have another one, and this one's graded 9 with a Beckett 10. My only, I only have two slabs here, and they're all both Beckett. Um, two graded cards. Next up is Chris Bigra. Um, Bigra is now on the Rangers, um, playing in the AHL. So yeah. Um, also in my ultimate video, I said he was a first rounder. He was an early second rounder in 2013, thirty second overall. Yay. Next up is um, Kasperi Kapanen. Um, Kasperi Kapanen could be like a really, really good player if he gets the opportunity. But then again, we'll see if he gets it in Toronto. But yeah, definitely like Kapanen. Unbelievably, like the best skater on the Leafs by far, I think. 
And um, yeah, he's just really good. He's he's a clutch player. He comes in clutch. Um, next up is a player that the jury's still out on is Oliver Shillington. Um, still still a prospect. He played in the AHL all last year. Um, defenseman. Time will tell with Shillington. Next up is a guy that's now on the Oilers. Is Pontus Aberg. Um, decent. Um, bit undersized, but yeah, Pontus Aberg. He could be decent for the Oilers. Um, next up is Hudson Fashing, who got traded to the Coyotes uh, not too long ago. But yeah, he's on the Coyotes now. Um, not too much of a future with this guy. I'm not even going to lie. Not too much of a future for Hudson Fashing. Um, next up, I got two of these. Um, first one, Trevor Carrick. He's a brother of Sam Carrick, if anybody cares. Here's the inscribed version here. This is, I guess, March 15th, 2016. But yeah, Trevor Carrick, he actually had some really good numbers in the um, AHL this past year. And uh, he did only play one game with the Canes, but still, he could. I don't know, he could be in the NHL. He still has some hope. Next up is Sonny Milano. Um, another decent young uh, forward for the Blue Jackets. There's quite a few Blue Jackets in here. But yeah, Sonny Milano, pretty solid. Uh, next one's probably one of the worst ones. Um, then again, he did just get signed by Boston in, uh, ju in July 1st. I think July 1st or early in July, but yeah. Mark McNeil. He was a former, former first rounder in 2011, I think. And uh, yeah, he got flopped around. I think he went to Dallas and I think he went to like Nashville or something. But yeah, he's been f flipping around. I think he's now signed with Boston. Not much of a future there with Mark McNeil. Next up is a guy that signed with the Islanders recently is Tom Kunackle. He's pretty solid uh, fourth liner, pretty much. He's just a designated fourth liner. He does have two rings now, so yeah, Tom Kunackle. Um, next up is a guy that, <laughs> well, he still has to, um, well, hasn't reached his potential yet. It's Pavel Zaka. He could be really solid. He hasn't really reached that potential yet. He kind of got overshadowed by some other players in New Jersey, some other young players, but yeah, Pavel Zaka. Next up is Nikita Shoshnikov. He's on the Blues now. And for whatever reason, uh, St. Louis has quite a few Russians. And I can't say they can't win anything because Washington just won the Stanley Cup. Next up is probably one of the worst, another one of the worst ones. I say that as like, well, this guy's definitely not going to be an NHLer. It's Sergei Tolchinsky. Definitely uninspiring numbers he had in the AHL. He's not that big. Um, yeah, so this guy, he's probably going to be nothing. He's probably going to go to Russia or something but yeah next up is Mike Riley on mini there he's on the Montreal now he actually looked decent for the Canadians towards the end of the year there but yeah Mike Riley he was a college signing I think um then we have Jason Dickinson um who he, he looks pretty good but then again he's probably just gonna be maybe bottom, bottom six like a third line center at best we'll see Jason Dickinson. All right, and then we got two of these. Um, I think this one I pulled this one. It's Josh Morrissey, uh, future watch out. This guy, he's really good. He's already playing a lot of minutes for a really good team. Here's, I'll show you guys the second one. But yeah, Josh Morrissey. Like, oh yeah, I, I, I wanted to point this one out. So this one here is card number 93. See, look, it looks you know a little bit cleaner, like he's putting effort in. But when it comes to card 778, you know he just like yeah, I don't care anymore. <laughs> But yeah, Josh Morrissey, really, really solid player. Next up, um, we got Justin freaking Bailey. Um, uh, he doesn't have a whole lot of future, not much of a future. I mean, he could be a bottom six player for the uh, Buffalo Sabres. We'll see. And I got to start moving these slightly over here because there's a lot of cards. <laughs> Next up is Brendan Leipzig. Now, he got claimed by Vegas in the expansion draft. And then he got traded to the Vancouver Canucks and um yeah I hope he does well there but we'll see next up Oscar Sundquist um he's on the Blues now St. Louis has quite a bit of depth up front St. Louis <laughs> Oscar Sundquist so yeah we'll see with Sundquist next up is uh <laughs> I can't believe I got this one Michael freaking Matheson um uh, this card was such a freaking pain to get. I don't even care about the player, okay? Well, I'll talk about the player in a second. But Mike Matheson, everybody wanted so much for this card because there's some freaking hoarder. Seriously, a freaking hoarder. Really bothering me, but yeah. Um, I finally got this card. 
and uh, Mike Matheson. He scored a highlight real goal against Detroit, but he also got undressed by Nathan McKinnon all last year. And he also has like a, didn't he sign like a seven or eight year deal already? But yeah, Mike Matheson, whatever, okay? Next up is the worst um, rookie from, uh, from 16, 17 by far. Uh, this guy is named <laughs> Daniel Altshu. I'm trying to look over here. York University. Yeah. He played with York University in 1718. <laughs> Well, at least he he's kind of smart. He's once again has ed education. I know maybe he realizes hockey's not going to turn out for him. So yeah, he's done. Yeah, he signed a bunch of cards for Upper Deck. Next up is a really solid player, power forward Miles Wood. Oh, power forward, yeah, kind of. Yeah, Miles Wood, really solid. Um, pr probably going to be a pretty good middle six player. All right, now on to another the next stack here. I got a. Move that down a bit. Actually, I'll put that there. And um, it's card number 146, and it's Austin Matthews. Um, this is definitely the, the big one to get. Obviously, I went out of my way to get it last year before the season started. Um, I want to get more Matthews. I want the inscribed, but um, that's going to be a bit of a pain to get. Unless I sell this one and other stuff to get it, and I haven't seen any for a while, but yeah. There you go, Austin, Austin Matthews, Future Watch, the best rookie in 1617. Um, and the second best rookie in 1617 is Patrick Laine. Now, <laughs> Patrick Laine. Yeah, Patrick Laine. Yeah. He, I don't have to talk about Laine. You guys already know what he's capable of. Next up, um, Mitch Marner. I guess they put all the really good players in one spot. Mitch Marner. This one's the inscribed version. Um, October 12th, 2016. I want the Matthews of that. Um, but yeah, that's number 29 and 999. Inscribed. Also got the Mitch Marner Black. Um, don't know the print run of these, but there's not many. Um, really slick looking card. Pretty awesome. And I do want the Matthews Black, but it's nowhere to be seen. I've seen one on eBay and they wanted like $250,000 for shipping. I'm not even, that's not even a joke. But yeah, um, next up. Jesse Pugliarvi. Um, Pugliarvi hasn't reached his potential, obviously. He's still 20 years old, but really had a season that wasn't great. Let's be honest. Um, we'll see with Pugliarvi. Um, potential's there. Next up is a player I really do like. <laughs> Quite the champion. Matthew Kachuk. Um, definitely going to be a really solid player for for the Flame for quite a long time. I see it. Um he might cross the line a couple times, but that's just the Kachuk way. We'll see with Brady Kachuk. People say Brady's going to be better than Matthew. We'll see. All right, um, next up is a player I still have faith in, Dylan Strome. Um, yeah, I still definitely have faith in Strome being a good player in the NHL, and I think he'll be a regular next year. How good will he be? I don't know. He won't be considered a rookie next year, though, so no Calder for him. Next up is a player that was signed out of college, and he's only put up like 20-something point seasons since and that's Jimmy Vesey so I mean he's a good middle six player for them but yeah nothing tremendous there Jimmy Vesey next up is an excellent player um he's already pretty much their number one defenseman he's only like 21 um it's Ivan Provorov this guy is an absolute stud um this guy's gonna be their no hit. Philly's number one defenseman for many years to come yeah 2015 draft was just insane and then another 2015 pick. Um, the Leafs actually had that the pick that um, Flyers drafted connecting with. I think it was 24th, and they traded back. And I believe they got Dermot and Bracco instead. But yeah, Konechny. Feisty player, good goal scorer. He kind of reminds me of a certain player in Boston that likes licking people. He kind of reminds me of that, a little bit. Next up is a player um, who needs more of a chance. Joel Erickson Eck. This guy needs to get more ice time, and he could flourish. Um, yeah, pretty solid player. Give him a top six roll and see what he does. Next up is another really, really good one. Zach Wierenski. This guy's going to be, a, well, between him and Seth Jones, they're going to be like the top defenseman in Columbus, which is just insane. But yeah, Wierenski's great. He's going to be, a, he's a bona fide number one D, or he's going to be. He's on, well on his way there. Yeah, Zach Wierenski, great player. Next up is another really good, oh, this is, jeez, this rookie class. I'm just like, I just look at the next and the next, like, whoa, these, this class is unbelievable. Kyle Connor, first full year, 30 plus goals, 57 points. Wow, <laughs> just wow, this rookie class. Kyle Connor, 
really, really good season with the Jets. And then this guy. This guy is fantastic. Fantastic Finn. Sebastian Ajo, 65 points in his second year. This guy, he should be in the same vein as Marner, pretty much. He's a similar player. Really uh, skilled, crafty. Yeah, Sebastian Ajo, really think highly of him. He's just an elite player. Very good player. Um, next up is a pretty solid player. Um, Anthony Beauvillier. Um, we'll see with him. Um, put up some decent numbers. I think he was like a point every other game. Then again, I think his line mates had a lot more points. But yeah, Beauvillier. Solid. He broke the... He made the Islanders as a 19-year-old in 16-17, so that's interesting. And then this one's also excellent. Um, Braden Point. Um, he had like 60-something points as well. He was good in the playoffs for them. Just a fantastic player. <laughs> yeah, Braden Point. This card skyrocketed. I had two of these, and I sold one for like 15 bucks to my brother. <laughs> Yeah, and I could I remember I could have bought an inscribed for fifty bucks and that was I was like, ah, oh, that's a little much. And hindsight, yeah. Well, I should have did that. <laughs> Next up. We have two of these. Uh, it's two uh Christian Dvorak. Um Dvorak's solid, he's probably gonna be like a middle six center or left wing, depends on where Arizona wants him. Probably gonna be on the wing next year. But yeah, it's Christian Dvorak, we got two of those. Yeah, definitely like Dvorak. Played on London with Kachuk and Marner. Uh, next up is Danton Heinen. He had quite the coming out party. Quite the good rookie year, full year. Um, he did go quiet come playoff time. I believe only had a, a single goal. But yeah, and he got scratched a couple games. But yeah, Danton Heinen. Pretty solid one. Next up is one that's not too great. Um, it's Tyler Mott. Now, he got shuffled around. He went to Columbus. And now he's on Vancouver. That was that Vanek trade that people are kind of eh, on. But yeah, Tyler Mott. Meh. The guy's just meh. Okay, here's an interesting case. We have two cards that are the same number. Cards number 164 and 164. And they're two different players. First one is Troy Stetcher. Um, he has a Future Watch Auto in here. That's a different number of cards. I think it's like 180 or 90 something. There you go, Troy Stetcher. And Julius Honka. Um... This one was inserted in 1718 SP Authentic. Um, really, like, what the heck is that signature? <laughs> like, seriously. But yeah, Julius Honka. So I guess he, he was meant to be 164, and I don't know what happened there. Next up is another fantastic one, and um, it'll make Habs fans salty, but Mikhail Sergachev <laughs> is, um, yeah, 40 points as a rookie, you know. <laughs> That was a bad trade for Montreal. I'm just being honest. Um, Sergeyev is going to be eventually a number one D. He's going to... I mean, Hedman's the number one guy in Tampa, but once he gets older, Sergeyev will take over that, or he'll get moved. Next up is another solid player, uh, Timo Meyer. He had a good um, second season. Wait, actually, first full year. Yeah, he didn't really play that much in 16-17. But yeah, Timo Meyer, pretty solid player. Had some good numbers. Expect more out of him next year. Next up, another fringe player that's probably not going to be much. Nick Baptiste. Um, yeah, I don't really expect much from this guy. Don't know why he's in the... There's like a crop of like solid players. I don't know why he's in there. Here's another one. Um, Gustav Forsling. Um, he, of course, was a Vancouver prospect, but he got traded for Adam Clendenning. So yeah, now he's on uh, Chicago. He might not even be a regular next year, but if Chicago's smart, make him a regular. Even if, even if it's a third pairing. Can't get that word out. Words out. Next up is a player that's kind of uh, I don't know if he, I wouldn't say he's busting, but Lawson Kraus. I didn't. He didn't really. Did he even play? He barely played this past year on the Coyotes. He played mostly in the AHL. So did he even play? I don't know. He barely played. He played mostly in the AHL, and it's not looking too promising. This guy was like hyped up to be the next like Lucic, and it hasn't happened yet. Next up is one that's. One of the best rookies, just to say that. It's Matthew Barzell. Um, obviously, 85 points as a rookie. He had a ton of assists. Dynamic player. Just a heck of a player. Great great skater. Really this awesome to watch. He just randomly had five assist nights, five point nights, like nothing. <laughs> so, yeah, Matthew Barzell, what a player. Um, next up is uh, Austin Matthews' teammate in Zurich, Dennis Mulligan. He looks pretty good. He's a bit undersized, but... 
looks to be a pretty good player for the Florida Panthers. Not signed, which is lame, but yeah. And it's like card number 26, so it would have been inscribed. Next up is um, Tony D'Angelo. This guy's had some problems. I believe he was a lightning pick. He's get, He's gotten shuffled around. He's on the Rangers now. I really don't expect much from this guy. Um, he could be good, but then again, his uh, attitude will probably stop that. Next up, this one also very good. This guy could be number one as soon as a uh, certain other defenseman leaves. Thomas Shabbat. Yeah, this guy's really excellent defenseman. Well, he will be, but yeah, Thomas Shabbat. Um, definitely have high hopes for this guy. I think he's gonna be real, he's gonna be great. He already is pretty good. Next up, Stephen Johns. This guy I believe was Chicago property. Then he got traded. That was like the Patrick Sharp deal. But yeah, Stephen Johns. Um, yeah, been a solid defenseman. They picked uh, him over Alexiak, I think. So at least that's something. They got rid of Alexiak. Next up is a weird one. It's Nick Schmaltz. I wish this was signed. And for whatever reason, he has an auto patch redemption. And I actually first saw the auto patch actually redeemed. And uh, yeah, I don't think there is a regular $9.99 auto of him. I thought there was when the set first came out. But yeah, Nick Schmaltz. Next up is Brandon Carlo, who I think, yeah, he missed the playoffs. Um, big right-handed shot defenseman. This one's inscribed October 13th, 2016. Definitely a solid player for the Bruins. Big right-handed shot defenseman. Next one is weird. Another weird one because I have two of the cards, but they're different. Arturi Lekkinen. This is to $9.99, not signed. And we have the one that's signed to $9.99, and they're... I guess there's 2,000 Lekkanen in future watches out there. So, yeah. This one's inserted in 1718 SB Authentic. And I uh, got it. So, yeah. Lekkanen's one of the bright spots in Montreal. Next up is player that could be great. is Jacob Chikrin. Jury's still out on him. Um, he looks to be quite the defenseman. We'll see, though. Jacob Chikrin made the team as an 18 ruled. Here's a player that didn't even play last year or... Barely played last year, even in the AHL. Zach Sanford. So I don't really know about Zach Sanford. I know that um, he was on... Wait, no. I think he's on St. Louis. No, yeah, no. I don't know. I think so. Yeah, St. Louis. Wait, I have this list right here. Yeah, St. Louis. Next up is a player I think he's quite good. Could be even better. Pavel Buchnevich. Um, this guy, he, first two seasons, he had like a partial season. He put up point every other game and... This past season, he also put up a point every other game, and then some. So I think this guy could be like a 50, 60 point guy, and then some. This guy's pretty good. Next up is a guy that was like a six rounder, um, Kevin LeBanc. This guy actually beat out Marner and Dvorak and Kachuk in 15, 16. Got 127 points with the Barry Colts, but that was his overage year. But yeah, still, and um, he had some. He had a really good season with. Um, San Jose Sharks this past season. Next up, card number 182. Jake freaking Gensel. Yeah, finally got Jake Gensel. Um, Jeez. Jeez. This one was a pain to get. I understand why it is more than what it should be. I mean, the guy had like, what, 40-something points, 47 points in the regular season. But he was unreal in the playoffs. Sidney Crosby and him were like close to two points per game, which is just insane. Then again, they did get knocked out by the Washington Capitals. He got like 21 points in 12 games, which is just ridiculous. This guy comes alive in the playoffs. This card's grade 8.5 with uh, weird subgrades. Like it rounds to a 9, but there's two 8.5, so we'll just round down to 8.5. You can tell like the centering on the name right there is kind of bad. But yeah, Jake Gensel finally got that card. Got it for an okay price, except a price. And um, next card, John freaking Quenville. This guy, he didn't play much last, or I think he played like one or two games for Jersey, but he still has decent potential. He's Joel, he's related to Joel. I think he's like his, uh, his Joel's his uncle. But yeah, John Quenville. This is the black, obviously. I'm counting this towards the set, all right? It's a black. It's a pretty nice looking card. Um, yeah, John Quenville. His, his 999 redemptions are actually coming out too, which is nice. Um, next up is Stanley Cup champion, Jakob Verana. He played pretty well in the playoffs for uh, Washington. Definitely uh, an important piece. Not super important, but um, definitely helped them win the Cup. And uh, yeah, Jakob Verana, pretty good player. And uh, 
Choo choo, choo choo, all aboard the hype train for this guy. Um, Thatcher Demko. Um, goaltenders are kind of weird. They're hard to gamble. They're they're a big time gamble. I mean, just look at Daniel Altshuler there. He's playing in York University now. Um, but this guy, he's put up good numbers wherever he's been. Um, we'll see if he actually plays on Vancouver next year. He played one game this past year. Um, he could be really good. He could be nothing. Honestly. It's just like Garrett Sparks in Toronto. He could be really good at the NHL level. He could be nothing. We'll see. Next up is a player I think uh, highly of. It's Brendan Perlini. Got 30 points. I got, Actually, I got two of these. There's one. Here's the second one. Brendan Perlini. He got 30 points, 17 goals. Um, yeah, I think this guy can be like a 20, 25 goal scorer. And 40 point guy. For the Yotes. And even then some. Definitely has a good shot. And uh, yeah, definitely like Brendan Perlini. Next up is Nephew Tyler. Tyler Bertuzzi, where he inscribed every single card because he didn't understand. And I don't know if there's any alternate cards where the first 50 aren't inscribed. I don't know if that exists. But yeah, there's Nephew Tyler. Of course, his uncle is the Grandmaster Champion Todd. If anybody's uh, wondering. And he has a cousin named Tag, which is Todd's son that's playing in the OHL. So there you go. Tyler, he actually had a really solid... Um, he played like half the year with Detroit, and he was actually quite solid. And hopefully he gets more time. Definitely like Tyler, nephew Tyler. Next up is Brendan Gooley. Pretty sought-after prospect for the Buffaloes. Well, not anymore, Russ Mistaline. But, yeah, he's a pretty uh, solid um, defensive prospect. Still a young guy. Um, he did play, has played this past season a bit with Buffalo, but definitely a solid young defenseman for the Sabres. Um, next up is... Uh, the jury's still out with this guy, A.J. Greer. Um, he's, a, he's a power forward. He played in the Quebec League. He was in the Mario Cup. I remember the same year that um, London won it with Marner. And But yeah, A.J. Greer, pretty solid. Um, he could have good potential, but I think he'll just turn out to be like a bottom six um, checker pretty much. Um, but yeah, next up is Blake Spears. Unfortunately for Spears, he doesn't look like he's going to amount to much. Um, I did, in, well, I really do, I like him from the World Juniors. That's what I'm trying to say. Team Canada, I like what he did. He played very well, but doesn't look like he's going to amount to much. Next up is Troy Stetcher again. <laughs> this time, it's instead of card number 164, it's 191. That Troy Stetcher, I think they just re-upped him not too long ago. Or signed him. Next up, another Vancouver defenseman, Nikita Triampkin. This guy's in the KHL. He thought about coming back, um... He might come back still. We'll see. Um, really huge guy. Um, we'll see what's triumphant. I mean, he might come back. If not, then it's whatever. Next up, Brandon Tanev. Um, definitely a good uh, energy guy for the Jets. Pretty solid. He's a brother of Chris Tanev. Anybody's wondering, obviously. <laughs> but yeah, good energy guy for the Jets. Next up is a player I think highly of this guy's actually really good and the reason why they traded the white players like that and stuff but yeah brandon montour this guy's really good um yeah i put up some solid numbers with the ducks and i think he's gonna be like a 40 point guy consistently in the nhl he's a 2014 pick he got drafted as a 20 year old which is interesting next up is nick dowd uh where do you sign washington he signed with the washington capitals yeah this guy's nothing tremendous um I think he's one of the oldest rookies in the rookie class. I think he's you know, like 28 years old now. But yeah, Nick Tao. Next up, Zach Hyman. Gotta love Zach Hyman and his uh, <laughs> children's books. <laughs> no, but yeah, this guy, um, fantastic checker. This guy's probably going to be like a 30, 40 point guy just because he plays with uh, Matthews. Hopefully they still keep him with Matthews because the chemistry is there. This guy, he'll go in the trenches. He'll get the puck out and uh, he'll give it to the talented guys, even though this guy does have some skill. And he has, <laughs> he writes children's books. Okay, next up, and the final card is number 197, Tristan Jari. It's going to be between him and DeSmith for the backup role, I think. Did they sign somebody? I checked their roster. I don't think they did. But yeah, Tristan Jari, he has some pretty solid upside. He could be a starter in the NHL. So yeah, guys, almost 30-minute video. It's probably the longest video I've ever made. Um, But there we go. It's gonna, probably going to take me 17 hours to upload. <clears throat> but yeah. That's why I'm doing it the night before. So yeah, guys, there's a 16-17 set. Finally have it done. I will be um, showing you guys my progress with 17-18. I'm less than 20 away now. 
I do need like Dubois and Keller still as in, like the large ones. I will have a pickups, and obviously you guys, um, I'll probably still include Matheson and Gensel in there as well. But yeah, those are the newly edition cards from 1617. Everything else right now is from 1718, and uh, yeah. So yeah, stay tuned for. Uh, whenever Splendor comes out, because I checked the release dates and I can't even tell what day it comes out. Hopefully it's August 1st and I'll go get a box. But if it's not, then that's kind of sad because I don't really want to open other stuff right now, to be honest. And obviously MVP is coming out too, so I'm looking forward to that. But yeah, guys, if you watched this much, holy cow, thank you so much. So yeah, guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys later.